Wing An Hua is the oldest shop in Chinatown, 91 years old this year. It's been in my family for five generations. So it started with my great-great-grandfather who came to America as a merchant. He opened it in the 1890s, and it was originally across the street, um, where it was more of a general store. They also had like medicine. You could go there for like postal service. But then he moved it across the street to a bigger space in the 1920s, which is where we are today. Back in the day when mother-in-law took over in the uh, mid-60s when her dad passed on. She wanted to focus on one object and she found that porcelain was her calling. And for the past 50 years, my father-in-law and mother-in-law carried this business uh, along and passed it on to us. This picture of all, all of us gathering here and having meals and going through our routines, opening the store seven days a week, was a picture that all of us have. Leaving to go work and live abroad for three years, that courage that I had to leave home was rooted in my strong base here in, in Chinatown and with my family. She could rely on that memory in her ventures beyond Chinatown. And it brings comfort, safety, and security, and it's uh, predictable. Myself and like my sister and my other cousins all have full-time jobs, and this was when like I think Mae was still abroad or had just come back. So none of our paths were to take on the store. Mother-in-law and father-in-law, they're 93 and 87. Uh, it got to a point where they were getting too old to carry it on. When I found out that uh, my grandma and my parents were considering selling the building and giving up the business, it was really upsetting to me and I didn't want to be so reactive. I wanted to understand where the decision was coming from. My grandma, I think, didn't want us to be trapped by the store. She saw it as a negative thing at the time. My family, I think, they didn't really know what to do in, in the time that we were going through the motions of putting our building on the market, talking to a bidder, and almost signing. They all were kind of frozen. She was in a fork in the road. She was accepted to grad school. We were on the cusp of selling the business, so there's a lot of uh, conflict and struggle. I was only one like jumping up and down, waving my arms like, no, this doesn't have to be something that just happens. And in the end, I didn't want it to be a decision that we regretted. And because we all live in the community, it's like, it would be so painful to walk past the storefront and see something else here instead of our space. At the same time, I had met a woman named Diane Wong and was starting her dissertation research on the gentrification of Chinatowns in the U.S. And so after she met me and had my interview, she invited me on other interviews with her. That moment of meeting her and then spending three months interviewing different community stakeholders was a turning point for me because I was able to listen to the stories of the people that make up my community. Although, you know, small businesses start in small worlds like Chinatown, neighborhoods like this, how do you sustain it is that, you know, you continue uh, for as long as you cannot and if there's an opportunity for those to return like me, you uh, offer them that option, and if that's not their wish, you move on. That's basically the way of the world. Because uh, for mom and pops to start a business in New York City, a gentrified New York City is very difficult. The expenses are very high, you don't have much money, and it's great risk. One point that comes to the forefront of my mind is just all like these hipster locations that are opening up in Chinatown. Um, while are, they're very trendy, they don't help sustain the Chinatown community. The visible changes are making people really nervous. I think it's tough. Older generations are stubborn in their ways. They don't see the value in changing the way that they're doing things because it's been working for so many years. And for me, I mean, it, it is challenging to work in a multi-generational space and to say, no, I think that we should change this, or I think we should use social media, or I think we should get a website, and to sell it to my 86-year-old grandma who is like, I don't know what that means.
Just because my grandma's my grandma doesn't mean that I know everything about her. I need to remind her that, hey, do you remember when you were 26 years old and had a lot of energy and were excited to learn and explore? Um, and to also remind her of how she started taking over the business. She reached a similar turning point with her family and the business in 1964 and none of her family members wanted to keep the space but she was the one who said no I want to keep it I'll take it over and so we have that relating point and to figure out the commonalities between our experience is where the generation gap closes right but it's just a matter of reminding her and telling her like, no, I'm here for you. I'm here every day, don't worry, you know, things like that. So the WOW project started in May. We had come up with this idea of holding a really informal panel discussion, showcasing second gen, third gen Chinese American business owners and asking them about how they see themselves playing a role in this cycle of a changing neighborhood of gentrification. We want to make sure that the future of Chinatown is in our hands versus people from the outside coming in. A way to be part of the community is by coming to the panels and joining the discussion, sharing their point of views, being an active part of the community, um, not just a figure who is here because the rent might be cheaper. Do not put uh, yourself to sleep to cope with the world because you have feelings, you have passion, you have interests, you have hobbies, you have an opinion about what's going on. I don't want for us, Wing Anwa and the WOW Project, to forget that we are a shop in Chinatown, but we also exist in a larger space too and what that means against a larger context because our work is more powerful in that way if we're able to connect with other people. It's about incorporating everyone into the truth about living together, not separate. Do you want to come out? Poa? Yes, I'm going to take out the stuff for it going. What time? Soon. Okay. Just gonna hang that on the dance Do you wanna go do it? Okay. When are you gonna be through? Almost. <laughs> You're up next, you know. <laughs> That's what you think. <laughs>